what she says. What? Uh, <laughs> subconscious. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> One month. Yeah, you can raise your mic up a little bit. Oh, okay. There you go. All right. All right. Because we want to hear all the dulcet tones of everybody. The fuck are my notes? Here we go. Do you know this one too? Oh. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Count us in. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> what up? <laughs> Kylie, getting wild. I didn't wild. know what that was. I heard the thing pop, and I thought it exploded. And I was like, "Oh, jeez!" <laughs> he just shook it up right before he came in here. <laughs> Fucking make it rain. What up, motherfuckers? Welcome to Necroelectric. I'm your host, Sean D. Skellington. This is my wife, Count Kylie, Countess, Countess Kylie Skellington, and we've got the Duchess over here. Jordan Oscar Farts Fernandez. Oh man. <laughs> I, I'm just going to call her Scream Fernandez from now on. Yeah. <laughs> I want a t shirt that says it because yes. I'll wear it. And people are like, what does that mean? I'll be like, oh, you don't want to know. <laughs> you got to watch the Scuba Valley you, episode. You got to watch it to find out. Today we have a very special guest. He's a fire. He likes fire. He's a fire. <laughs> He's a fire. <laughs> and I always fuck up names. Why well, I'm, I'm blanking. Patrick Nolan. There you go. There yeah. Patrick Nolan. Points for Sean. <laughs> Boom. All right. If this is your first time watching this, because we've been getting new subscribers and more views Yay, lately. Thank Hello. You. Welcome to our fucking world. Welcome to your nightmare. And hit that subscribe button or share this shit if you're watching it on Facebook. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Share it. Sharing. Share, share, share is caring. caring. All right. Unless it comes to STDs. Yeah, don't share that don't shit. Share <laughs> Keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We do a thing called Who the Hell Are You, where we get to know you by playing a get to know you game and then asking you some interview ish questions. I think he studied for this. He knows what's coming. Okay. Mm. Not really. <laughs> All right. Well, well today. I tried. We've and you threw me off my game. So. <laughs> <laughs> we've talked about SCDs. We've talked about shoving stuff up our butts. Yeah. Today, I got a game called Trippy Fucking Questions. Oh, okay. Cool. okay. All right. Let's see. What do people who are born... Do you think people that are born deaf... Do you think that death? they hear deaf? Okay. People that are born deaf, do you think they hear an inner monologue? I do believe so. <laughs> no, because never. they don't, because they they haven't heard what voices sound like. If they're born that way and they never hear any sound, I mean, I can't, it, they have never heard their own voice. I would imagine it'd be more like uh, pictures or I something. I don't know. I don't think it has anything know. to do with hearing voices because there are some people who aren't deaf who don't have an inner monologue. This is true. Mm. I mean, their inner log may not be vocal it may be more visual visual like they actually see pictures or they actually see words and it just kind of writes itself across their chalkboard and their brain that'd be yeah. exhausting to have to like visualize like everything <laughs> you think all the time yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i don't know i i would imagine not but i, I and i don't know anybody to ask either do you know anybody that's like fully deaf no no i don't either i, I know a couple i mean i'm part of the asl community but oh really get yeah. them on the phone that's uh, cool I, <laughs> <laughs> insensitive that's, that's acquiring minds want to know i mean <laughs> hey, throwing, maybe we can get them in <laughs> you throwing this bones coffee sticker Probably with over 36 <laughs> delicious flavors <laughs> manufactured right out of shreveport louisiana yeah. Shreveport, Louisiana. Best three hundred dollars I've ever made. Shreveport. Yeah, I used to live there. It's it's it's, uh, it's good and bad. Oh wait, they have gambling there, don't they? Mm -hmm. I was trying to think. I was like, wait, why did he make three hundred dollars yeah, like, there? <laughs> <laughs> what did he do? He's working that corner. <laughs> Town Casino. Oh, interesting. I've never been um, anywhere further than like the like the very edge of Louisiana. I've never been in Louisiana, but. We got a trip planned for November. <laughs> Not pew, me. Pew, no pew, 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 
It's a broad thing. Broad's gone wild. Yeah. What's the most you ever won in a casino? 300. 300? I walked in with 10 bucks in my pocket, played two, walked out. Respectable. Wow. What'd, what'd you play? Uh, just the pull slots. Oh, okay. Or whatever That's they're called, cool. the rotators. I'm a blackjack okay. man myself. $2,200, yeah. my biggest score. Nice. And then you probably spent it all? Uh, I blew most of Back it. Back on the table. <laughs> <laughs> most of it. I think I came home with like at least 11. Irish hookers. Irish hookers? <laughs> Why Irish? I don't know. Because <laughs> I, I go gambling with my Irish like friends, yeah. but, but we don't get... You guys just all it, sit It's not and Irish and inclusive. <laughs> just fucking drinking Mickeys with Irish hookers. Irish only. <laughs> Irish only. All right. If a vampire bites a zombie, does the zombie become a vampire or does the vampire become a zombie? <laughs> no. Um... If the vampire bites the zombie. Yeah. He would not turn because he was not bitten. But, but there's there's blood it, there's blood exchanging. Yeah, but if the thing's already dead, if the zombie's like the dead. undead, and vampires are the undead, I mean, it's just kinky at that point. <laughs> but is the vampire trying to turn the zombie, or is he just hungry? He's trying to turn it. I He's said, trying to turn is he going to become a? Then I think he could. I guess so, but if he bites the vampire, like if he bites the zombie, he wouldn't turn into a zombie because he would have to be bitten. Like if we're talking like twenty-eight days later type zombies, like that's highly infectious. Well, that's true. Yeah, maybe they both turn vampire and what kind of zombie? I think they both turn. (laughs) They both turn. Turn into zombie. Maybe one turns into a zombie and one turns into a vampire. Yeah. (laughs) They just yeah, trade they places. They switch. Man, I'd be pissed if I were a vampire and I had to turn into a zombie. I'd be yeah. like, "Fuck, man, <laughs> this sucks." It's like that, like that fucking movie where the mom and the daughter switch places. Oh yeah, <laughs> Parent- Freaky Friday. Oh yeah, Freaky someone Friday. needs to make another version. <laughs> she went to Parent Trap. <laughs> I did. I went to Parent Trap. My yeah. bad. Yeah. My bad. I remember the God was the the dude from Family Ties. Remember that movie where he switches places with his dad? No. No. Mm-mm. No. You guys never watch made for TV shit? <laughs> I mean... I think it's called Switching Places. I mean, it sounds familiar. I was thinking of uh, the one where Jason... Uh, ooh, Jason Bateman and Ryan Reynolds, that's like they uh, switch places. Like, Yeah, that's the best friend switch. Yeah, something like that. I mean, that's not the name of the movie, but that's the plot. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> All right. If killing people is wrong... Why do we kill the people that kill people? This is getting I don't, political. <laughs> I don't believe in the death penalty. I don't I don't believe in the death penalty. I don't think it's our I don't think it's our right as human beings to be able to judge someone to death. Okay. I feel like putting them on death row is nearly I mean that's I don't So know. if John Wayne or the, if the night stalker killed all three of your kids and you were at court you wouldn't be hoping for the death penalty opposed I mean, what, to life what? in prison. I mean, I don't know. Showing you his tattoo and shit. I don't. I don't really wish death on people, though. Like, I. I wish Even like a guy who killed all three of your kids. I, I guess if maybe if I was in that situation, <laughs> maybe. What if you even took Oscar out and your cat? Oh, if he caught my cat. Oh, <laughs> the cat is where she has the life. <laughs> no, I don't know. It's it's a it's a difficult thing, and and you know it's it's like well, do you kill them and and now they're you know it's like a free ticket out or do you let them suffer and rot in jail because the a majority of um you know like serial killers and things of that nature like they just die of old age or they die of disease on death row and i feel like that's a pretty bad punishment i mean you have to suffer in fucking jail for the rest of your life if you vote me president of the united states okay. i will advocate to clear death row and take all the money that we waste every year Is on how let them go no <laughs> nope no they're all done and then i take all that money and i'll put it towards homeless that's, i mean that's, that's a, my political plan that's a good idea because um, my mindset is you you have because i watch true crime shit all the time mm-hmm. and like like bundy and all them like they get put in jail they'll get out they immediately go and kill again immediately yeah and if you have a rabid dog that continues to kill 
everything it comes across at a certain point you just got to put it out yeah but ted bundy was fried i mean he was he was yeah after and, like four attempts to put him in prison yeah because he kept escaping what does that say about the prison system <laughs> well, if he, he can he escape al- he was also bailed out and released several times yeah i know but you know people like the night stalker they i mean he died of um like lung cancer or some shit like that like he i mean he yeah, suffered old age though yeah he was in his 60s but even still like it i don't know it's it's a difficult thing because it's like if he killed my cat though that's a that's a tough one <laughs> would, would you rather like give that money to like the homeless or like orphans and see them have like people who are struggling that never had a good life opposed to people that had the opportunities but then chose to like end other people's opportunities i guess so i mean that makes sense just saying like veterans yeah veterans exactly that's a that's a big contest right there mm-hmm. it's police fire people that are injured on the jobs that can no longer work yeah. i'd rather see all that money go there so vote me president <laughs> and I'll, I'll change some shit. <laughs> Sean Skellington, 2024. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Slayer will be at my inauguration. Yeah. Oh, God. Shit. Yeah, that would be interesting. <laughs> All right. Uh, question two of our segment. What kind of porn do you watch? I really don't. You don't watch any porn? Lies. No. <laughs> It's okay if you do. We're all guilty here. Like Bondage? we're <laughs> Muppet, Muppet you... porn. No, <laughs> never. My work schedule's too busy for that. It's honestly just go to bed. Just go to uh, bed. Okay. If you could change anything in your life or pop culture, what would you change? Probably that he had time to watch porn. <laughs> <laughs> Pop culture, nothing really I can think of. But as far as like in my life, there's a few things that I could go back and either redo and do better or see what was coming rather than getting hit by the train that hit me or whatever. So not mm. physical train. train. I about to say you got hit by a train. Like, dope. damn. <laughs> you look good. <laughs> yeah, unbreakable. I got fed up. So you would just uh, foresee whatever crossroads you came across in life? Yeah, that or teleport back and be like, don't do it. There you go. Tell the 18-year-old me, don't do it. Yeah, but all the things that you did have made you who you are now. Bad or good, they have made you who you are now. This is true, but I can also see, like, if I had taken the other path, if I had gone this way instead of that, instead of, like, don't get me wrong, I love the military. It was a great experience for me, but there were some things in the military that's like, no, you probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah. <laughs> or go back, you know, after getting out of the military and, you know, having my name be notorious all over places that it shouldn't have been, so. Oh, yeah. my. That sounds ominous. <laughs> it does. Here's a little fun game, too. You could write on a piece of paper three words, and it gets sent back to your 18-year-old self. What three are they? Words? Three words? Only three words. Oh. Um, mm, stay at home. <laughs> lame. <laughs> Fucking lame. <laughs> Mine would be invest in Google. Invest in Google. That's a good one. Fuck yeah, it is. <laughs> this this uh, podcast room would look a lot different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, be a gold-plated table. Probably not. Probably still be this fucking table. You go. I need more time. Sign <laughs> the paper. Sign the paper. Oh, yeah. I had what a... What paper? In the military, I was training to be a computer hacker. That was, like, going to be the job of military Well. 85% into this course, I filled out. But at one point, while we're in the course, I'm sitting there typing up, and they're like, all right, we're going to show what your skills are, see if y'all can actually do what y'all are being trained to do. Well, we start going through, and like, oh, what'd you do? Oh, I got through Napster. What'd you do? Oh, I got through such and such. What about you? DOD? <laughs> <laughs> what? DOD? You tell me you got through Department of Defense with the... <laughs> And they start going, like, checking my computers. Like, what do you know? Mm-hmm. I just did what you told me to. Like, I, <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Is, like, here, it's right here. They they looked at everything, and then, like, by the end of the week, I've got 
a table just like this with a general and then three letters in their names FBI, CIA, NRA, NHA, like everyone. Wow. Like, <laughs> name on paper. Let's go. Nice. I could have been set for life at that point if I hadn't have failed out. Like I had to graduate that course. Mm. Uh, and then it didn't matter where I was or who I was at that point. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Damn. But then that got me blacklisted out of the military for seven years and not to hack, so. Damn. Wait, wait, wait. They used it against you? Well, the fact that I did hack DOD. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, well, we had these contracts, but you didn't graduate, and then you hacked DOD. So, no. You're, you, there's a, there was a seven-year statute of limitations blacklist that I kind of got put on. That's fucked up. That sucks. Mm-hmm. Rude. 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 What about you? Um, Meet Sean sooner. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would have avoided a lot of really shitty relationships. That's for sure. <laughs> um, it would be hoard all Pokemon. Mm. I'd be so rich. <laughs> yeah, those boxes of Gen 1s, those are like 130 bucks back in the day. Yeah. If you would have bought 10 of those and just put them in storage. We'd be living in a mansion right now. Yeah, have it's a million dollar Charizard cards on yeah. it. It's a good one. <sighs> yeah. I mean, mine's kind of lame, but at the same time, like, I there's a lot that I could have avoided if I had just stayed at home and not snuck out and, like, actually listened to my parents. But those are the fun parts. Oh. Yeah. I mean, are. was it fun at the time? Sure, but, like, it didn't really make me feel good in fact it actually made me feel really shitty about myself so yeah because it was like it wasn't dudes that were my boyfriends it was just like dudes i had crushes on and dudes that i liked and most of the time it would be like how many dudes we talking just two (laughs) just two over my four (laughs) over my four year high school career it was two but they were i mean you know you at a young age you develop feelings i saw your head shake over there <laughs> you develop feelings and then you get your heart broken and you're like oh, seven holy shit <laughs> you you no you i didn't know i was i was i snuck out of my house but i wasn't like with different guys every night it was more like sneaking out to go to parties and then every once mm-hmm. in a while is with dudes but yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we got time for an ad real quick. don't call me Scream Fernandez for nothing. <laughs> okay. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Mod Ministry. Mod Ministry merch creates for the edgy woman, the kind of woman who works hard but plays much harder, who embraces femininity but tests the societal limits. We are not for the faint of heart. We are bold. We are beautiful. Check out Mod Ministry Etsy page for handmade lingerie. Five-star rated seller since 2014. Ooh, be on the lookout on modministry.com because I believe we have a sale coming. Yeah. I believe. Yes. We, do. <laughs> we coming up on seven years on yeah. mod? Seven years. Holy wow. Shit. Damn. Seven years self employed. Woohoo. That's, That's awesome. Fantastic. Congrats. Hey. All right. Let's get to know you, man. So we heard you like to play with fire. I do. What? Both as a fireman putting it out and as a fire entertainer spinning it around my head. Boom. So he can potentially create fires and then put them out. It's good to have both skill sets. Yes. <laughs> I can see where that comes in handy. I think I saw a CSI episode about that one time. <laughs> Just saying. Clean the fifth. <laughs> What's the uh, craziest shit you come across fighting fires? Um, I haven't actually fought any live fires. Well, I'm I, like I'm trained as a fireman to Texas, but I haven't worked as a fireman. Gotcha. Mm. Um, but I have heard some really jacked up stories. I can tell you worse EMT stories than I could. Okay. Fire stories. But uh, one of the fire stories that was told me is there was an old woman that lived in her house. Yeah. House went up in blaze, and they kept going in and out, and they couldn't find her. Oh. She had gotten behind the door, <gasps> and at, like she charred up, and they just kind of. Oh uh, no. Oh my god. Uh, shout out to the char lady. <laughs> that sucks. That's awful. Can you imagine <laughs> being like her daughter or her grandkid and like having to hear that with your own ears? Like, yeah. oh my god, I would never be the same. Nope. Never be the same. My uncle died in a fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's rough. Mm. Yeah, it 
it's, it's definitely probably one of the worst ways to go, but it's also biologically one of the quickest because once your nerves are singed out, you don't feel shit. Yeah. And you die of, like, smoke Yeah, I was going to say... More like, than burns, right? Don't you, like, pass out and, like... I mean, In you're basically... Cases, yeah, the carbon monoxide is going to get to you first and yeah. you know, fire itself, but it still sucks. That's not a way I would want to go. Yeah. Nope. I don't. I don't know, though. I think... I would rather burn than freeze to death. Freezing takes a lot longer. Nah, you probably go to sleep if you're freezing, right? Yeah. Not necessarily. Well, I, I mean, mean, it takes a long from the EMT standpoint. It, it's there's a bunch of different ways that are gonna suck no matter what. Yeah. I just feel like hypothermia takes a longer amount of time to set in, and then like, you know, by that point, I mean, you can you can come back. I mean, I don't know how your whole body come can come back from hypothermia but like i just feel like at some point yeah you would fall asleep but it would take longer have you ever seen a snowman yes <laughs> <laughs> all right you're trapped in a room there's fire there's no way out you know you're gonna die your stereo is there what song are you playing your last song oh god <laughs> um <laughs> what's that famous song by um by poison poison cherry pie N- no that's not poison <laughs> my cherry pie. that's not that's not poison <laughs> yeah. um it's Brim michaels is poison Pretty sure. hold on hold on <laughs> hold on hold, hold on because what I, I who's faster uh, i got you girl is it is it hold on it's oh, no, warrant. warrant. It's yeah, warrant. It's warrant. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. No. Uh, uh, let me see. There. What is there? Poison Junior? Poison Junior. Brett Michaels Junior. That's like saying Foo Fighters is Nirvana Junior. <laughs> <laughs> Same man. Man, I don't want to die to every rose has its thorn. What's the other one? There's like a really popular one. Ah, oh, shit. I can't think of it. But maybe it would be well, a poison you're song. You're already dead at this point. I know. <laughs> the jungle, baby. <laughs> jump in the fire Ooh, hey <laughs> yeah something like that what about you man probably disturbed and destructible oh, there, there you go. go like i'm gonna scream that at the top of my lungs yeah. i'm gonna burn out nice <laughs> why not <laughs> mine would be something totally creepy like uh, like Tip through the window. Snoop Dogg? Circus music. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Ain't nothing but a G thing and yeah, shit. Actually, yeah, actually, I could do that. <laughs> Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Nelly. <laughs> Nelly. Yeah, it's it getting, getting hot, hot in here. here. I think he played a freight bar, right? Freight bar or backyard? No, or backyard. Yeah, he backyard. Backyard. yeah, he played a backyard yeah, on had, Monday. In the past year, we've had, past couple months, we've had Nelly. And uh-huh. Snoop Dogg. Mm-hmm. Not, not to throw shade, but we do have a fucking coliseum. Like I know, I don't know why no one center. plays Why there. are they playing at the, <laughs> the, at the fucking backyard? backyard? And Tony Hawk was at our skate park not I long ago that. either. I saw that, yeah. Yeah. Um, Waco's popping. <laughs> Uncle Cracker's coming to the backyard. The yeah. I saw that the other day. I was like, oh. Jordan's going to go throw her bra on stage. Ew. <laughs> No, I never got into Uncle Cracker. He's the he's so strange. He's a uh, Kid Rock Junior. He is Kid Rock. Ew, <laughs> ew, Kid Rock Junior. Okay, so you don't put out the fires, but you play with the fires. So how did you get into that? Uh, that is a funny story. Back in Maryland, when I was in the military, there was one night where I'm driving around and I look, and off to the side I see like Sam's Club, but there's dancing fire over there. <laughs> so I actually pull up to see Brand what they're doing. <laughs> pull up to see what they're doing. I'm like, you know, what's going on here? What is this? And they're like, oh, we're we're a fire group. We're you know just practicing out here because Sam's allows us. Blah 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 during the nighttime. And I was like, okay, well this seems pretty interesting. So I got joined up with the group called Optical Orgasm. Um, I don't know cool where name. they're Shut at. Up. Great now. name. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> and um, it kind of it was kind of like a new video game, but you beat it too quickly and we got there we did it it was like okay i'm learning i've got this let's do this and then there was one night they're like all right you ready to fire up we're gonna try you with blue which was a color you you can color your fire with different chemicals and stuff Uh and blue is probably the worst one to start anybody out with because it will vortex and suck out all the oxygen in the area all right started doing uh one of the tricks we call windmill which is basically where you're spinning around your head sucked all the oxygen out and just 
gone. Oh, shit. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> and Man like, down. I don't think this is where I want to be. So <laughs> after all that in Maryland, I came home in 2009 back to Waco. And one of my uh, friends, he's like, hey, I've been in San Antonio for the last three years. Guess what I learned? I'm like, what? He's like, I learned this thing called fire poi, fire spinning. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> 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 as serendipitous as this is, I kind of learned the same thing in Maryland. He goes, cool, we're starting a troop. Let's, hold on. Would you like to start a troop with me? <laughs> <laughs> and come to find out, like, the two troops that he was kind of part of down there in San Antonio are, they're great people. Um, they're kind of our parent troops in a way. One's more disbanded. One still does their thing, but they're, like, at monster truck shows. And mm. uh, so Brothers of the Flame and... Badass. Oh, yeah. Brothers of the Flame and Spitfire were the two from there. Shout out. We started ours here, and we were called um, Ignite just to be part of that. Mm-hmm. And Ignite lasted. We've been through 19 members. Um, once Josh, which is the friend that was like, hey, he came to me one day, and he's like, hey, life's not happening right now. I'm going to step out. I'm going to let you take it on. And I kind of stepped back from it a little while, and figured out where I wanted to go with it. Mm -hmm. So I've changed it from uh, what it was Ignite to Fire by Night, which actually had a little bit more Christian air to it with the, you know, Israelites Mm -hmm. and the Pillar of Fire by Night. Yeah. So it was to our message. We had, like, it was really a stickler of me at the time because I didn't want to have, like, really secular music doing it and we would play stuff like skillet we would play stuff um some of the harder like christians and then like what about evanescence i'm like they were kind of considered christian weren't they no they were just labeled christian at the time but they Mm -hmm. were never even uh amy lee was like no that that was improper but you know that got all us emo kids at heart sitting here going (laughs) yeah we're gonna listen to christian music yeah Yeah. (laughs) but we did that for a while um played a couple gigs and it slowly, you know, it's 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 still in me. But ever since my number two passed away a couple of years ago, it's been it's been hard to pick them back up. Mm-hmm. And like when you sit here and you watch our videos on YouTube, and you sit here and you say, okay, you know, they're having fun, they're doing their thing. Hey, that guy's 150 pounds lighter. Uh, yeah. And I mean, I've gone through all kinds of depression and the stress eating has really got to me so you know i could pick it back up i'm probably gonna bludgeon myself pop myself in the head we don't want that (laughs) it's going to happen like the second you pick up the tennis balls and those socks you are going to bash yourself in the head you're gonna hit yourself in the arm guys look out it's gonna happen (laughs) you're gonna be sitting on the sidelines for five minutes (laughs) yeah but it, it was it's been a rush it was there's nothing like lighting up there's and I know y'all have y'all's entertainers when, when y'all have the thing, but when you're there and you're in that moment, mm-hmm. you're there. There's a zone. There's a You're just in it. Mm-hmm. And you let the music take control of you. You let your fire do. And your body's going to just move. You're not going to sit here and be like, okay, I got to do this trick that way, this way. You're just going to let it flow. Yeah. And it's and it's amazing. Between that, the fire, inter- the, the spinning and then the actual like fire breathing that I do, that's probably the hottest thing I've ever kissed. <laughs> nice. Ever. But yeah, we'll have to it, get you a protective gimmick, put you in a suit of armor or something yeah. while you do it. Yeah. <laughs> the Black Knight of mm. Fire. It sounds great, but I'm also thinking like helmet and fire breathing. That bad yeah. idea. <laughs> the imagery is pretty cool though. <laughs> We got time for another ad? Yes. This episode is also brought to you by Skellington Curiosities. Skellington Curiosities is the only Curiosities and Oddities shop in Waco, Texas. Full of clothing, lingerie, accessories, oddities, and everyday curiosities. A spooky vibe, 365. Visit us online at skellingtoncuriosities.com. Um, we also offer tarot readings. From Star Tarot fucking reader. That bitch right there. <laughs> Hello. See what the stars have in store for you. Yeah, we won't actually. I won't actually be able to do it this weekend because we'll be at the Renaissance Fair. Oh, 
Um, okay, that's the weekend before this airs. Yeah. The weekend after this airs, we're going to be at the Texas Honors Convention. Yeah. yeah. I just saw that pop up on my yes. Facebook, and I'm like, dang it. Where is so it? I'm so excited. It's in, it's in Dallas. Dallas. Okay, okay. That's pretty cool. Yes. There's also, in Houston, I know there's the, like, how to die, or the... How to die? Like the faces of death. Uh, uh, what? Oh, the museum. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. That, that and it's cool. It's kind of from what I've seen of it. I've never been to it, but I would love to go. Hell yeah. yeah, I'd go but, too. I mean, I used like to I watch said, the I've videos. Been in EMT. I've seen some shit. So yeah. <laughs> I thought you were about to say a how to die convention. I was like, whoa, that's got to be fucking wild. Hey, I'd go, I'd go to a thousand ways to die convention. I mean, not not for myself, but just to like, I don't know, see how people have died, like stupid yeah. ways. Yeah, and believe me, look, the, the faces of death thing is very interesting to watch. Oh, I've it's seen all of them, the old VHSs, DVDs. Wait, what's that? Faces of death? What? Faces of death. What is it? It's, well, yeah. it originally it was a. You could order them on TV. It was you could order the VHS or the DVD, and it's just you just watch an hour and a half of people dying. Why? What? It's fucking. Remember we talked about it with Cassie. It's just wild. Like you'd have a, a soldier like in the Philippines walking down a road, and then he steps on a landmine, and, and you're like, holy shit! And you know that. Every scene, you know, something horrific is going to happen. My anxiety peak. I know. I don't think I can watch that. You know that in every scene, something horrific is going to happen. Shit. But but they'll lead up to it. They'll show, and it's all like hand cam footage. So like you'll be like, what's going to like? You they'll just show like an intersection. You're like, oh shit. <laughs> and it's like a minute and a half of just like you're like they're like filming like around no. this intersection. Yeah. No. And then fucking car just, comes out. Of, yeah. Just, goes guy. And some no, guy thanks. flies out of the windshield, goes tumbling, and fucking gets some, ran over by something okay, else. Okay, let's change the subject. <laughs> they actually had a lot more gruesome ones, but uh, see, I think that I'm yeah. super tough, and then you tell me something like that, and I'm like, no, no, yeah. no. Dude, like I can handle anything adult related, but. And a couple kids. of them, they have the kids, kids. in the in the Asian nope. and shit. Mm-mm. Yeah, it's it's like with me as an EMT, it's there is a disassociation. Like, yeah, y'all are you have to people. Y'all are y'all are people. Yeah, if y'all are still in a car accident. And y'all are breathing. I'm going to you first. If that girl ain't got a head, she ain't there. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a body at this point. Yeah. I feel like you'd have to. You'd have to turn some part of yourself off to be able to. But that's why that's why I couldn't be an EMT or a nurse. Like I couldn't deal with and it's not because of like body fluids or anything like that. Like that stuff I can I can handle a lot of that stuff. But it's just like people like screaming or, you know, the fact that they're like half alive and I'm like, oh my God, I'm responsible for you. Like I don't I don't wanna be like, no, I already have to keep other people alive. So (laughs) one of the worst roles that I had, um, we were on the box, we came up and it was out China Spring Valley Mills that way, mm-hmm. and there's a huge turn with a guardrail that yeah. rolls around it. Well, when we pull up, we just kind of see blood smear on the guardrail. I'm like, oh, no. Okay. Well, we kind of get to the guardrail itself, and we can see down it, and down over here is a motorcycle. No, uh, with a set of legs on it. Uh, oh no, just legs. Just legs from here down uh. on the motorcycle. Everything else was. In this field, Where off that guardrail. Where was the other half? Everything else was in this field. Oh. It was oh, everywhere. God. Although oh. the coolest part of that. To no, me, that's the cool part. Me, to me as an EMT, the coolest part of that is we actually found the heart intact. Wow. Held it in my hand. Okay, that's. Intact. Like, that was pretty badass. That's kind of cool. But otherwise, we're like, where do we start? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. I used to ride a little bit and then I stopped because my friends, all a bunch of my like really close friends all and around the same period of time all broke their backs, hips and legs in uh, these horrific uh. accidents. Yeah. And, and remember the guy, there was a dude in Santa Cruz. He was, cause if, I don't know if you guys have ever been to Santa Cruz, but you have mm-hmm. to go up this mountain to go to Santa Cruz. Yeah. And it's like one of the most treacherous fucking like, Highway highways in the fucking planet. And this dude in a bike was riding and a car came over in his lane and just decapit or cut his fucking arm off and he was riding his bike and he continued to ride his fucking oh my bike God. until he got to the hospital <laughs> that's some death oh my god <laughs> yeah. oh my yeah, yeah. no shit. see that's mm-mm. any any time that like friends or family members or whatever talk about like getting a motorcycle i'm like don't 
please don't. I care about you way too much to be like, oh yeah, yeah. go get a motorcycle. It'll nope. be so fun. <laughs> oh, and they're badass, but everybody lays one down at some point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, and, that's and if not my. Laid it down. You're fucking lucky. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm not coordinated enough for that. I would instantly die. I'm bad on a regular bike. Put a motor on it. I'm fucked. Exactly. <laughs> like regular bikes. I'm like, oh my god. You put a motor on it, and I'm, you know, splattered. That's me. <laughs> well, we're getting towards the midnight hour. Do you want to make uh, some shout outs? Sure. Um, shout out to. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. All I can think about is um, I know coming up at the end of July, there's going to be a show at the Brazos Theater. Um, it is Cream Puff slash Izzy Weaver's birthday, and it's going to be a great time. And I'm actually going to be performing, so Yay. it's going to be super fun. And um, tickets are limited, so be sure to the the Facebook event and the tickets are live. So if you are interested, go check it out. Go buy some tickets. Come support uh, the community because they really, you know, they really love to have everybody out there, and the performers are great. So definitely, definitely check it out. Love it. Boom. Uh, we have all kinds of shit if you guys want to come kick it with us this summer. We have, obviously, our Skellington Markets, the fourth Sunday of every month. Yep. It's going to be in the dock. The 25th from 5 to 9. We have the Renaissance Fair, a tribute to Mikey Mann, a.k.a. Crooked, Bur- Crooked Beard. Mm-hmm. Crooked Bird. Crooked Bird. <laughs> and we have our uh, Haunters Convention that we're going to be at. And we just announced our second annual Halloween Ball. Yeah! To be held at Brotherwell Brewing, two yeah. stages. We so got the excited. tickets down to ten bucks. It's gonna be so good. At the door. It's gonna be a lot more laid back this year. With last year, we tried to get real fancy on it, but um, I think we're just trying to do a laid back vibe with the food trucks and the really good Brotherwell beer. Two stages. Yeah. I mean, it's gonna be spooky. It's gonna be spooky and fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, everyone come in costume, costume contests, the whole night. Pretty badass Games. last year. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> it was. COVID kind of put a damper on everything, but it was still a lot of fun. Yeah. It was. Yeah. It was one of the better thing, better um, events that I've done for Halloween. Yeah. So. Oh sure. yay. Yeah. Well, last year we we had a we had a limit on how many people to yeah. keep everybody safe. Now so, everybody which, can come. Open. <laughs> yeah. So this. So now we're able to lower yes. the ticket price and. Let everybody come. Mm-hmm. They, we're gonna have the hearses. We're gonna have uh, Zed Zero is gonna be playing Halloween fucking songs. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have a couple other bands, yeah. sideshow performers. Halloween. Maybe you'll see. Halloween. I'm going to do my best. I'm <laughs> gotta knock the rust off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> doing great. Doing great. You got some shout outs. Oh, um, shout out to the universe. <laughs> Universe, yeah. give us some good answers today. Be good to me. <laughs> what about you, man? I would have to say, you know, I would uh, probably vertigo with Brothers of the Flame down mm-hmm. in uh, San Antonio. You know, damn good guy, damn good teacher. Um, I would also say Ace with uh, Spitfire. He's not a bad guy. <laughs> Shut okay. up. There's a little bit of tension there, but it was not oh. he's he 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 was supposed to train me for fire breathing, and it went to somebody else, and I spent a whole oh. week in San Antonio and never saw him. Oh. <laughs> so, Ew. Ew. But yeah, no, and you know, do all the D and D players out there definitely. Hell yeah! Shout out to Oscar. Shout <laughs> out to Oscar. All right, guys. Well, we'll see you next time. Bye.